Thank you so much for staying with us. We continue with the conversation we've been having with Dr. David Kabata and Mr. John Wangombe on investment, on uh, saving. We've had a great conversation so far, and now uh, we continue with it. And Mr. John, I'd like to start with you because there's something we were discussing, you know, uh, when we took the break on uh, people that come to you and consult you on, for instance, the best institutions where they can borrow, you know, they can take loans from. Uh, what, what do you tell such people who come to you? Um, each individual is unique in his needs. Mm -hmm. Each individual, his financial circumstances are different. So the information we gather from the client is what informs us where to match that client so that his, his or her needs are adequately met. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the Copesha app helps to, to kind of um, correct the information mm -hmm. and match with that product that is tailored for that uh, client. Mm -hmm. yes. If you could just take it home, give yes. us an example of, uh, say, a client that came to you and asked you this and you told them that. The most uh, recent case I have mm -hmm. and which have, uh, we have uh, successfully concluded, mm -hmm. the client came to us, his institution, Okay, he, the, the business was more like a startup because he came up with the two products. Mm -hmm. He sells uh, omena and uh, soya mm -hmm. to supermarkets. Mm -hmm. So he needed to have, have a motor vehicle mm -hmm. to facilitate that. And he also needed to inject a few cash into his business. Mm -hmm. So his, his bank could not accommodate him on those two fronts to buy him a car mm -hmm. and also to inject some funds so that he's able to pay his suppliers. Mm -hmm. So he approached uh, an institution, two, actually two, because mm -hmm. not one could uh, uh, cater for both. Mm -hmm. They unsecured because he didn't have a collateral. Mm -hmm. So he was able to source for uh, the, the unsecured loan mm -hmm. so that it, it could boost his business, his supplies. Mm -hmm. He could now service his orders adequately. We also made an application with an institution for the motor, uh, motor vehicle finance. Mm -hmm. And he was given an offer. He was given an offer of 60%. Mm -hmm. To him, he felt that that offer wasn't, uh, okay, it was good, yes, but it would draw more cash into his business mm -hmm. because he has to f contribute 40%. Mm -hmm. We appealed, and luckily he got uh, almost 90% financing. Mm -hmm. Right now, as we are talking, he's, uh, he's using that fund to do his supplies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And actually, there's something that you just reminded me, yes. uh, because if I could just go back to where you started before, you know, you founded Kopesha yes. on quitting your job. Yes. And uh, if you could just, like, take a look at last year, it was a year where we experienced very many layoffs, right? Yes. So many people lost their jobs, and perhaps others did quit their jobs. So if someone is currently watching you and they are where you are then, either they quit their jobs or they lost their jobs and they, and they don't know what to do next, and now uh, they're planning to venture into, you know, self-employment, entrepreneurship, what do you tell them uh, from your experience? From my experiences, yes. because let me say, it, it, it's like I've been into an academy, mm -hmm. and my lecturers are my customers, they are my professors, mm -hmm. I love them. Because like I had an incident of a gentleman who was working with a company, mm -hmm. he was in the, in the technical area, mm -hmm. And he was also de dealing with a client. So when he lost the job, mm -hmm. he was able to pull a job from the client. Mm -hmm. So he, was, he had an LPO he was looking for financing. Mm -hmm. We sourced around and luckily because uh, anybody who could listen to him, he saw there were, he had the potential. Mm -hmm. He was given a startup capital mm -hmm. and uh, he is doing marvelous. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very happy, mm -hmm. yes. So, so that person, who, who kind of lost that job, he should utilize that, that knowledge, mm -hmm. that experience mm -hmm. he had, mm -hmm. and try to explore that, or whether there are any opportunity he, can, he, he or she can monitor, monetize. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's your view on side hustles when, when one is still in employment? Because uh, perhaps from those side hustles, you could get like an idea for that business. If, if 
you know, when the worst comes to the worst and you say lose your job, but if you had nothing in mind of like a business idea or something, if you were having like a side hustle when you were employed, perhaps it could help you, my thinking. What do you think? To be frank, mm -hmm. uh, when, when I was employed, I started my side hustle. Mm -hmm. So I realized my side hustle is making more money than when, what, what I'm earning. Mm -hmm. Actually, I had to have two lines. Mm -hmm. The other time, a colleague called me using the other line. Uh -huh. So when I asked her, where do you work? Uh, uh, You're in which branch? I was like, okay, I'll come back to you. Mm -hmm. You see, at that time, I was handling salaried people, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it was a side hustle. So I, I, I wasn't broke. Okay, I was getting something small. That's what gave me the confidence. Mm -hmm. if, I, if, 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 if now I can walk out, I'll go and take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dr. David, I'd like to pick your mind on those two points. Uh, those people that unfortunately lost their jobs last year, because we did experience that a lot, even across the media, you know, the betting companies. Uh, so let me get your mind on that and uh, what we're talking about, the side hustles. Is it something you'd encourage someone to, you know, venture into? Let me see this, Grace. The people who have a, the, 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 the biggest opportunity to make it in business mm -hmm. are the people oh, who are working. Right. You said and, that. <laughs> yes, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. Because when you're working here, what usually happens is that you see the gaps in the organization. Mm -hmm. The problem with our people is that they don't want to leave employment. They want to leave employment when they are either fucked or laid off yeah, or they retire. retire. They don't see opportunities within the organization. Mm -hmm. The guy who started Twitter was working for, uh, for Google. Mm -hmm. The guy who started Instagram was working for Google. Mm -hmm. But they saw opportunities inside there. The biggest, uh, the, biggest gain, uh, the biggest gain that we usually have the people who are working is that most of these organizations you see here, they are usually very lethargic when it comes to new ideas. Mm -hmm. And these are new ideas come from employees mm -hmm. because they are the people who are seeing the gaps, mm -hmm. whatever the clients want, but the organization cannot be able to it's give. Mm -hmm. The problem with these people is that they do not know how to create value. I go back to the creation of value, mm -hmm. creation of the value for that customer mm -hmm. who the organization does not want to do what? To deal with. I'll give you what usually happens. Let me give you what happens with this big organization. Mm -hmm. They want to keep the client that they already have. Mm -hmm. And therefore, they forget the other clients who would want the product, mm -hmm. but they cannot be able to get it. Grace knows that because she's the one who is handling these customers. So that's a market for her mm -hmm. to sell a product for that market. Mm -hmm. But she does not want because of the comfort of the job. Now, another good thing about the people who are employed, I've said they have money to start whatever they want. Mm -hmm. They have the gap, they have the problem, because mm -hmm. the problems are there in the organization. Mm -hmm. The other good thing about us now is the social media. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem with us is that we use the social media for the wrong things, mm -hmm. insulting politicians mm -hmm. and all these other things. Gossip, everything. Gossip and all that thing. <laughs> yeah. But social media is a platform to, to create and develop your blood. And that is what I've been telling young people. Mm -hmm. Look at it analytically. Facebook has 2.5 billion people. Mm -hmm. That's a market. YouTube has 1.9 billion people. Mm -hmm. That's a market. Mm -hmm. What are you doing with your YouTube? What are you doing with your Twitter? Mm -hmm. What are you doing with your Instagram? And what are you doing with your Facebook? Mm -hmm. Those are not platforms to do whatever you people do. Mm -hmm. As we, be, we people do, mm -hmm. putting photos there, looking glamorous, no. It is a place where you need to create your blood. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Last year, and I, you people highlighted in the media, the person who earned a lot of money in YouTube was an 80 years old young boy who earned 2.6 billion mm -hmm. shillings, Kenyan shillings. What was he doing? Analyzing toys, toys. for the yes. other children. Yes. What does that tell you? It tells you a very simple thing, that today, if you have something that you want to sell to people, there is a platform to do that. Mm -hmm. I have a friend of mine, we schooled with him, called Chef Raphael, he was my classmate. Mm -hmm. And one day he told me hey, that you want to be one of the best chefs in the world. And you know, when somebody tells you that from Kenya, you don't believe yeah, it. Yeah. But he had a plan. He would go cook, 
take videos and put it in Facebook and YouTube. Mm -hmm. Anything that is cooked in this country, if you go to his YouTube channel, you'll get it there. Mm -hmm. CNN called him mm -hmm. for an interview. Wow. Is he not the, one of the best chefs in the world? Yes. So what does that tell you? We have the platforms to create our brands, to sell our products, but we don't want to sell. So create value, deliver it through the platforms that you have, your, your Facebook and all those things, mm -hmm. and then ask yourself, how do I make money? Mm -hmm. I have no problem with Ray of Me, I left the job actually. I, did, I was not even laid off. I quit mm. when I realized I would talk. <laughs> Mine was talking. When I realized that I had a mouth to talk, I went. And I can tell you from 209, I've been talking mm -hmm. and making money through talking. Mm -hmm. So, listen. The, yeah, there's so many things that we people can be able to do with ourselves. Mm -hmm. First, fear. Can we try? Let me come to the side hustle. Mm -hmm. Side hustle is very important. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at our salaries, we cannot be able to cater for our, for our, for our needs. Mm -hmm. And the second thing, if your side hustle goes hard in hard with what you are doing, then you are creating your brand, actually. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like talking about brands because if you don't have a brand, then you cannot be able to make it. So as much as we are working for the organization, we need to think about something else that we can be able to do for ourselves. In fact, I keep telling people that organizations are there for you when you can be able to create value for them. The day you will not be able to create value for them, they will push you out. <laughs> so make sure that you make, you, you do as much as you can be able to do, especially when you are there. So get something that you can be able to do for yourself outside your, your job. If it is not eating into your employer's time, and do it religiously. Mm -hmm. I keep telling people, and I don't know whether it is good mm -hmm. to say that, mm -hmm. <laughs> that don't love your company, love your job. Mm -hmm. Because you do not know when the company will stop loving you. Mm -hmm. It will break your heart. What is going to happen to you? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Let me just hear you silently, Kidogo, because my bosses could be watching. <laughs> <laughs> but I hear you. <laughs> okay, so I understand we have uh, some callers online. One, Mr. Okay, okay. I'm told let's just carry on. Uh, they'll call back again. So uh, he actually disrupted my flow of thoughts there. But let's get to starting a business. Mm. Because now we are talking about side hassles and everything. When you now decide to take that step, either being a side hustle or you've lost your job, you've quit your job, and you're now starting something new, mm. what do you do? Now, the first thing that I keep telling people is to know yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is the biggest challenge that we have in this country. Mm -hmm. People don't know who they are. You know, everybody is creative, and I have a problem with people. I have, I, anytime I say that, I have a problem with people. Mm -hmm. And the reason as to why I say that we are all creative is because we are created in the image of God. God created creators. So, we have, a creation, we have a creation capability. But our creation capability is different based on ourselves. And that is where what we call the types of entrepreneurs comes mm -hmm. in, or what we call the entrepreneurial DNA, the gene of entrepreneurship in you. Mm -hmm. We have people who need skills to sell a business. And we call them the craft entrepreneurs or skilled entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, let me just cut you short. Just mm -hmm. hold it there. We'll come back with types of entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs, right? Okay, we have our caller, he's back, Mr. Ken Omari from Mombasa. Good morning, Ken. Asante Sana for calling in. What's your contribution to our discussion today? Hello, good morning. How are you? Morning, Ken. Yeah, my name is Ken Omari. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the nice uh, discussion that we're having there. Yes. I just have a question. I had about, mm -hmm. I had about uh, financial literacy. I want to pose a question. Mm -hmm. Whenever you go to a bank, whoever is advising you about the financial literacy, you find that they're advising you and they want you to buy their product. Mm -hmm. But now my concern or my question is, which is the best way to get that financial literacy? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ken, for that question. Uh... I think I can uh, hear him very well. Mm -hmm. Because the person who is selling 
that product is an interested party, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. He wants to sell what he has. Mm -hmm. And him, if his needs do not match with what the offering is on the table, mm -hmm. then who will, be, who will suffer? It's the borrower, isn't it? It's the customer. Mm -hmm. So with Kopesha, we, we after, because our interests, our employer is the customer. Mm -hmm. We are serving the customer, not the lender. Mm -hmm. We get our fees from the borrower. Mm -hmm. So you have to get him the appropriate product. I think I've uh, highlighted of a case of a customer who went and uh, used his motor vehicles to borrow from an, an expensive institution. Mm -hmm. When he went there, he booked that loan for three months. They could have advised him, look, we are a bit expensive after we give you this money. We have given you the opportunity. You can now go start shopping for a lender who will give you better terms, cheaper, and even for longer. Mm -hmm. Them, they are making their money, so they kept quiet mm -hmm. until the, the day things went heavier. The customer actually, the vehicles were being sold. They we were in the yard, mm -hmm. and we man through Kopesha, we managed to salvage the situation mm -hmm. because the customer is the one who is paying us. Mm -hmm. So that gap is where we, we fit in for the interest of the borrower. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm. I think that is a challenge we have with our banks. Mm -hmm. Our banks are not there to advise us. Our banks are there to sell their products, and I'll tell you why. Everybody you see in that bank has targets. Mm. Are you going to, to fulfill your target, or are you going to fulfill customers' targets? So that, that is a challenge that we have. And therefore, I keep advising them to, 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 to try and do what we call consultation, our due diligence. Try to look for people who can be able to help you, mm. especially before you take the loan. Move from one bank to another. You are not holding that, but you are not tied in that bank, uh, your, your bank. You can go and consult in other banks and try to see or to know what is happening in other institutions before you take a loan, because a loan is not a joke. And you, it, this is money you are going to pay. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you need to get the best deal ever. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. When I cut you short, you were talking about the types of uh, entrepreneurs. Yes. The reason why I brought in the issue of the types of the entrepreneurs mm -hmm. is because of you. Who are you? There are some people who cannot be able to get into some of those. Uh, we have different types of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. I've just started by talking about a skilled entrepreneur, somebody who needs a skill for him to start a business. Mm -hmm. So if he does not have a skill, he cannot be able to start anything. Mm -hmm. And that is what we are trying to push our young people to do when you to take them to Tibet. Mm -hmm. Somebody will go do electrical, electri electrical, a diploma in electrical, he comes and starts something that deals with electri uh, uh, electricals. Mm -hmm. That is a skilled entrepreneur. We have social entrepreneurs, people like the late Professor Wagali Madai, people who see a social problem and they make a business or develop an entrepreneurial concept using that social problem and they solve that problem. So if you are not a social entrepreneur or you cannot be able to see what is happening in the environment socially, mm -hmm. you cannot be a social entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So we also have opportunistic, people who see opportunities. These people do not need a skill. They only need an opportunity mm -hmm. and so that they can be able to, to, to get there. So who are you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We have other callers online. Samuel Kiari from Kawangwari. Good morning, Samuel. Thank you, you for calling in. What's your contribution yes, I, to our discussion today? Yeah, I, I, what? Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Carry on, Samuel. Yes, I wanted to ask uh, that, uh, that, uh, the, that person uh -huh. how, how, I can, how I can get in contact because I'm, uh, I'm uh, in, in investment mm -hmm. and I want to make more investment so that I can, uh, I can advance. Okay. So okay. I, I would like to, to, to contact him privately. Okay, sure, sure. They'll both be sharing their contacts with us, Samuel, at the end of the interview, so just stay with us. They'll share the, uh, their contacts. We also have Kevin Kemboi from Kitale. Good morning, Kevin. Thank you so much for calling in. What's your contribution to our conversation today? Kevin, if you can hear me, good morning. Thank you for calling in. What's your question or comment to our regarding our discussion today? Yeah, my question is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, Kevin, we can hear you. Carry on. My, 
My, my question is... Yes. How can I reverse my... Uh-huh. How can I my when I family provide their bed? I have a bed. Okay. Um, uh, since we're having a challenge hearing your question, Kevin, uh, I wish we could have gotten it. But then maybe even as we wrap up, because there's a question from one of our viewers on our Twitter here. You had addressed it when we started the conversation, but I think he, he quite didn't hear it because it says, Hi, Grace and your guests. Saving an investment is a deliberate and a very uncomfortable, uncomfortable thing to do at the beginning, but whose fruits are very sweet and at times everlasting. Indeed, most Kenyans are living a cycle of debts, as pointed out. How does one break that cycle? I think, Grace, you need to be disciplined. Because you see, saving is not, as she has said, saving is not something that is very, that we like very much, actually. Mm -hmm. Because it, it makes us not to do what we wanted to do. Yeah. And that is why I said, if you are not good in saving, can you forfeit that money and do something with it? You can even take a loan, you can even engage something that where that money will not be with you. Mm -hmm. So that, you see, the biggest problem is access of money. When access of money is easy for us, mm -hmm. it is very difficult for us to save, actually. Because you see a good shoe and you want it. You want to look nice. And I know you had saved that money for something else, but you'll have to take it. But if the money is not there with you, however good the shoe is, mm -hmm. you are not going to take it. So we need to start thinking about how we can be able to remove that money from our salary mm -hmm. completely so that even when the salary comes, the money is not there, so you are going to live based on what you have. We need to start living within our means, and that is a challenge that we have as people, especially in Kenya, in Africa, actually, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm told uh, we need to wrap up, so I need to get your closing remarks. I'd like to start with you, Mr. John, and also you can share your contacts for anybody that would like to reach out to you. Okay, okay. Uh, for me, uh, my take is on the borrowers, that they need to know that there are various types of loans. Mm -hmm. So they need to consult widely so that they don't end up taking a product that is not appropriate mm -hmm. to their needs. Mm -hmm. I've even had cases of somebody who take a loan for farming, yet there are farming institutions mm -hmm. like AFC, mm -hmm. which have better terms, and he takes from it from an expensive institution. Mm -hmm. And he ended up not even leaping uh, whatever he was targeting. To. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, our product, Copesha, mm -hmm. it is in Google Play Store. It has our contacts. They okay. are all there. Okay. So one goes there, selects the product that he feels uh, suits them, suits them mm -hmm. and he makes an, uh, an application. We guide him accordingly. Okay. Mm. Thank you, sir. Mr. David? So for me, I will tell Kenyans to do away with the resolutions, do a long-term plan, mm -hmm so that you can be able to, and have milestone for the plans, have a benchmark for the plans, how far do you want to go? Mm -hmm. Second, start small. Stop looking for a million hearings to sell a business. Mm -hmm. Start with a little that you have, grow from something small. Standard did not start from up. They started as small, it was an idea actually, mm -hmm. somebody's idea. Mm -hmm. So why do we want to start from up there? Mm -hmm. Can we start small so that if we fail, we fail small, if we succeed, we succeed from there as we go up. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you reminded me of microwave blessings, especially in this g generation. Yes. You know, they want instant blessings. You want to start something today and tomorrow you yes. at the top, yes. which is not always the case. It is not always the case, actually. In fact, there are very few businesses that have been able to get to that point very easily. Mm -hmm. it's like, we call them gazelles. Mm -hmm. You have Facebook and all this other. Mm -hmm. And it's because the kind of the need, and also in Pesa, the kind of the needs that they are trying to solve in the market are huge. Mm -hmm. People, sh uh, the last thing that I should also t tell people, use social media in the right way. Mm -hmm. Social media is one of the most 
one, one of the strongest platform platform for you to create your brand. Mm -hmm. If you use it that way, mm -hmm. you're going to go places. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. David Kabata, a distinguished lecturer, entrepreneur, and an in innovation consultant. And uh, of course, Mr. John Wangombe, MD, Kopesha Solutions. Thank you so much for taking your time to join us today. Uh, we had that conversation on uh, investment and savings, but uh, we need to take a break. On the other side, we'll be having some international news. And of course, I'll be sampling your feedback at the end of this program. Thank you. Uh, let's take that break. <laughs>